When I worked on inertial measurement units, IMUs, I ended up traveling a bit. If I wanted to avoid talking to the person on the airplane, I could tell them I worked on inertial measurement units and their eyes would glaze over and I could enjoy my book. But if I was feeling oddly social, I could tell them wherever I was going. A racetrack to test on NASCARs, an airfield to test on acrobatic planes. IMUs are tricksy like that. They look boring or magical, depending on your perspective. Mostly, it's about sharing my love of IMUs with you in case you end up using an accelerometer, gyro, or magnetometer in your project. And I'm going to make some assumptions about your inertial sensors. They're probably MEM sensors, cheap and reasonably accurate. They're digital, which is nice because they won't get any noise added to them by carrying analog signals through your system. You're probably talking to them through I squared C or SPY, and they're probably three axis, although this all applies to single axis as well. These are the sensors of an IMU. With three axes for each of these sensors, it would be considered a nine degree of freedom inertial measurement unit. Accelerometers measure acceleration, Gyros are those sandwiches, and magnetometers measure X-Men powers? I fear that will be your takeaway, but let's see if I can do a little better. Accelerometers do measure acceleration. F equals MA. This is A. This is the acceleration. Imagine we're in space. Zero G's free fall. How do you know if you are going at a certain speed? You don't. In a spaceship without windows, you can't. But you can tell if you're accelerating. Physics tells us we can detect acceleration, and then to get velocity, we just integrate. And to get position, we integrate again. Well, there's a bit more to it than that, but we'll get to it later. Still, I don't spend a lot of time in space. That's why saying accelerometers measure acceleration is not very useful. It's just that acceleration for us is usually towards the center of the Earth. Sure, on one of those carnival rides that spins around so fast you can stand on the walls, it would measure acceleration toward the wall and toward the ground. And if you accelerate in your car, the sensor can measure that as well. But for 90% of their life, most accelerometers answer one important question. Which way is down? Moving on to gyros. I brought this gyroscopic toy to elucidate this. I have no idea what it has to do with gyros other than it has a spinning wheel. See, gyroscopes have a wheel that spins, and that spinning wheel is important to their function. Like the spinning of a top keeps it stable on a tiny point. The spinning keeps the top from falling due to gyroscopic stabilization. Gyros push back against change. We can measure the amount of force needed to turn in another axis, and that's the gyro measurement. MEMS sensors are not gyroscopes, and yet we call them that because they measure the same thing, how fast something is turning. But they provide no resisting force, no gyroscopic stabilization. They aren't really gyros. They're angular rate sensors. Think about detecting spin. Probably you're imagining yourself spinning around. But any turn is a spin. You don't have to go all the way around in a circle for a spin to matter. Think about waving hello. All the joints that you have to move, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, those are all turning. Angular rate sensors are often used to define gestures and turns without worrying about the exact up and downness or height of the user. I'm going to pause to discuss a feature of MEM sensors because it affects the gyros most of all. To do that, I actually have to define an algorithm I keep saying, MEMS, M-E-M-S, Micro Electro Mechanical Systems. These are mechanical systems, micro mechanical systems. They're tiny sensors. The tiny sensors are especially prone to change with temperature. Let's think about what this means. If you have an airplane, from takeoff to cruising speed, 
you experience a great shift in temperature. But you don't want your sensor to say that your plane has gone into a flat spin. The sensitivity of gyros to temperature can cause a lot of problems. But on to magnetometers. Where accelerometers tell you up and down, the z-axis, magnetometers put you on Earth. They give you x and y by telling you which way the Earth's magnetic field is pointing. These are not only prone to temperature variation, there are lots of errors around them. Electric fields, magnets, metal of all kinds. Those things can be removed via calibration. Maybe you've done it on your smartphone. It's that figure eight motion. It shows the magnetometer all the different angles it can measure. It provides a basic hard and soft iron calibration, which means it's providing zero to the magnetometer. Magnetic field is inconsistent. There is this thing called the world magnetic model. Lots of data and math to aid you in reading your magnetic field anywhere on the earth. But it's not that useful when you just need to know a general which way is north. Now that we know what each sensor does and what you'd use it for, it's time for a quiz. <laughs> 